Hi, I'm Nick Kramer of Global Fixed Income Research at Standard & Poor's. The new year has so far started off with a continuation of 2015's second half downturn. Chinese equity market declines spilled over to other regions, including the U.S., and at the end of the month, the fourth quarter 2015 GDP numbers came in, showing a paltry 0.7% expansion in a slowdown led by lagging retail sales amid the holiday season. As a result, the S&P 500 posted a substantial loss of 5.1%, speculative-grade bonds continued their recent descent, losing 1.8%, while investment-grade bonds gained 0.87%. Unsurprisingly, 10-year Treasuries also saw their yields drop under 2%, coming in at their lowest point since last April. January would start off as one of the worst months in recent years for U.S. equity and speculative-grade bond markets. In a clear shift to safety, the S&P 500 index would shed over 5% for the month on a nearly steady stream of daily losses. Speculative-grade bonds would post their third straight month of losses at 1.8%. This would also be the seventh month of declines out of the last eight, with an average loss within those seven months of 1.7%. Meanwhile, investment-grade bonds would gain a little less than 1%, with stronger returns seen among most of the higher constituent rating categories. With stressors coming from all directions recently, January proved another difficult month for speculative-grade bonds, particularly the lowest rated. Global factors including China's economic slowdown and equity market retreat have led to a generalized flight to quality among investors. Arguably, this recent round of stress began in the second half of 2014 with a precipitous drop in the price of oil and most heavy metals. Since that time, the triple C to single C category has lost 24% as this segment is heavily represented by firms in these commodity-based sectors, including many oil exploration firms and metal mining companies. Conversely, investment-grade bonds saw gains across the board, with the single-A category leading the way at 1.6% in January. Recent market woes have been so pronounced that some level of discretion by investors is even being seen within investment-grade bonds, as evidenced by their diverging yields recently. Yields on most investment-grade industrial bonds have seen modest increases followed by a prolonged stationary period over the past year. However, for the triple B category, this trajectory has been a steady increase. By the end of January, the triple B industrial yield hit an even 5%, with an overall increase of 10 basis points for the month. This compares to declines of roughly 12 basis points for all other investment-grade rating categories. Meanwhile, speculative-grade industrial yields have shown a decent amount of intramonth movement particularly among the lowest rated bonds. At one point, the single B industrial yield hit 14.3% in January, but ultimately retreated to 13.2% only 10 days later. Some positive news from outside the U.S. did manage to provide a late month rally. However, this is yet to show any sustained relief. Despite all of the losses experienced in January, not all was bad news. Towards the end of the month, an unexpected source of relief for global financial markets came from the Bank of Japan as it began to institute a negative interest rate policy. A week earlier, Mario Draghi once again indicated the ECB might increase available stimulative measures in the near future to combat low inflation in the region. Add to this the increasing sentiment among investors that the Fed may hold off on another interest rate hike in March, though the consensus still remains in favor of one. Could all these factors prove strong enough to counter the negative drivers of the last few months? Unfortunately, it is, of course, too early to tell.